All right, so welcome back. Um, we're going to start in on cell-mediated immunity. So what you're seeing here in this image um, are a couple of cytotoxic T cells, and they're attacking a cancer cell. Kind of cool, actually. Um, anyway, so with that, and hopefully I can get my slide to advance. There we go. All right, so cell-mediated immunity refers to destruction of antigens by T cells. Okay, so that, that's what that is. It's cells attacking cells. So again, what so since you're attacking a cell, right, I, hopefully this makes sense, like it's going to be the most effective of things that already have invaded cells, right? So um, you're attacking essentially your own body's cells that are already been invaded by some microbe, such as you can see as fungi, parasites, viruses, cancer cells, and again, those foreign tissue transplants. So you're attacking actual cells. And hopefully this image also drives that home. <clears throat> All right. um, so as I mentioned to you before, we have two different types of T cells. We have helper T cells. And one of these things that the helper T cells is that they're gonna, they are going to secrete cytokines. So cytokines are basically, they're, pro, they're small proteins and they act as chemical messengers. So they're, so they're not technically hormones or anything like that, but they kind of function similarly. They act as, again, chemical messengers. The one that we're going to be particularly concerned about is this interleukin-2, okay? Because this interleukin-2 is going to act as a co-stimulator for other helper T cells, cytotoxic T cells, and B cells, okay? So if you kind of remember back to that picture we saw a little while back um, with those helper T cells like helping, Right? The way they're helping is by secreting this interleukin-2. And uh, remember, the helper T cells are going to display a protein called CD4 protein in their cell membrane. Right? Now, cytotoxic T cells, they're still in that same T cell class, but they're different. So these are going to actually actively attack the other cells, and they will display the CD8 protein. Okay. Um, and both of these... Kind of mentioned this to you before, have two sort of states of being. So they're either in the memory form, so this is sort of like you can think of it as the at rest form. Um, however, when they're in the memory form, they're already programmed to recognize the original invading antigen, right? So you, the only way you'd have a memory form is if you've already been infected once by whatever it is. Um, and so you have these this sort of reserve army on hand to then, you know, be in their, in their prime. So they're going to mount a very rigorous um, attack the second time you're actually infected with the same thing. Okay. Um, and then, so again, that's the memory form. The active form is the one that's actively doing whatever it is. So either producing those cytokines, again, the important one here is interleukin-2 if you're a helper T cell, or actually attacking the pathogen if you're a cytotoxic T cell. Okay. So let's just take a look at this image here. Um, and we'll, we'll kind of talk through this, and then we'll talk through what the, the bullet points are. So here we have this antigen-presenting cell. Remember, in cell-mediated immunity, those T cells, they actually have to have the antigen presented to them, right, at first, because they're not going to recognize it. Um, so remember those antigen-presenting cells, there were three, right? We had dendritic cells, macrophages, um, and B cells. Those could all gobble up something that was just floating around in, in the inter interstitial fluid or in the bloodstream, and then they could present it. They, they'll go back to, to the lymph nodes or lymphatic nodules wherever the, or whatever tissue it is, and they'll actually present that uh, antigen to T cells. And not every T cell will recognize it, but once that antigen-presenting cell finds one that does, um, and you, uh, it will activate that T cell. So in this case, we're looking at helper Ts. Um, so here you can see that MHC2 molecule with the antigen. It's presenting it to the T cell. That T cell has a special area on it called the, it's called the TCR, or this is, this is really high tech here. The TCR stands for T cell receptor. So it's just a receptor on the T cell that will bind to the antigen. And the CD4 helps um, dock those two cells together. So as you can imagine, the two big cells are kind of smushing together, so that CD4 helps dock so that those proteins line up very well. Okay. Um, so let's say, again, this antigen-presenting cells come across some, I don't know, bacteria, virus floating around the bloodstream, 
it has engulfed it, got, you know, processed it, uh, inserted the antigen onto that MHC2. It goes back to, you know, lymph node, um, finds a helper T cell um, that actually recognizes it. it. So it shows that antigen um, to the T cell. The T cell's receptor will bind to the antigen. That CD4 protein is going to help dock with the MHC2, and that will activate this helper T cell. Okay. Um, basically, what ends up happening is that the T cell starts dividing um, and differentiating. By differentiating, we're talking about it's going to differentiate into the active form and then the memory form. Okay. Um, so let's kind of take a look at what the words are here. Again, you have to activate it by, by a specific antigen. You know, your T cells are going to be inactive. Hopefully, if, if, if they're too active, you may be having like an autoimmune response or something like that. Um, as I mentioned, those, the receptors on the surface T cells are the T cell receptors. Um, and then, you know, as I mentioned, um, the different, they have, and really have lots, like millions of T cells in your body, and each will have a unique T cell receptor. So this antigen presenting cell may take this antigen to, I don't know, a couple of thousand T cells before it finds one that will recognize it. Okay, but once it does, these activate and they divide very quickly into many, many, many new T cells that all recognize this antigen. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Um, so let's take a look at uh, this slide here. So now we're going to be talking about cytotoxic T cells. So remember, cytotoxic T cells are going to be the ones that um, go and actually attack other cells. So okay, so here we have our infected body cells. So this body cell. I don't know, again, pick your cell. Last time I think we said a simple cuboidal epithelial cell has been infected by something, right? So it processed that antigen and it put it into that uh, receptor, that MHC1 receptor in this case. So you have a cytotoxic T that's gonna come along and eventually one that kind of goes, oh, I can bind with that. Now it has to have this co-stimulation by the helper T before anything is going to happen, okay? It'll only become activated once it's bound to that, um, to that MHC1 antigen complex and once it's gotten this co-stimulation. Okay? And it's thought that this co-stimulation is necessary to prevent any kind of like, immune responses from occurring accidentally, right? Because again, autoimmune dis disorders can be very deadly. Okay? So again, and the, and the key uh, co-stimulating cytokine that we're gonna be talking about that is important to us here is this IL-2 or interleukin-2, okay? All right. And then once the cytotoxic T cell is activated, one of the things that it will do is it'll um, proliferate and then differentiate as well. So proliferate, it divides, divides, divides. And again, by differentiation, we mean it goes into the active form and then the memory form, okay? That, that's the reserve form in case you, this, whatever it was, and tries to infect you a second time. All right. Now, I should mention that uh, these cytotoxic T cells, um, they'll kill infected target cells, much like those natural killer cells. I think we'll see that in the next slide. But there's only one difference. So whereas the natural killer cells will just, whatever that microbe is, it does it, you know, it, it, it kind of recognizes many different microbes. These cytotoxic T cells, again, they're going to have that um, T cell receptor that's going to be very, very, very specific. Um, so it has to be able to bind to a very specific antigen. So not all T cells are built the same. Okay, and again, you have millions of different types of cytotoxic T cells, and you have to have the right one that recognizes that antigen um, for it to bind to it um, and then kill it. Okay. Um, so this is basically how the cytotoxic Ts do it. Um, we have a couple. Di they have a couple of different uh, 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 tools in their toolbox. So here's this infected body cell. Here's our, our cytotoxic T. It's already been activated. It's gotten that co-stimulation, and it releases something called a granzyme. Okay, so a granzyme. Basically, that granzyme is going to um, break into the the uh, uh, 
infected body cell, and essentially it causes that infected body cell to undergo apoptosis. So basically it's, it causes that infected body cell to burst. So you see all these microbes that are infecting the cell, they then get released, they can't hide inside the cell anymore, and so now a big monocyte or some other sort of phagocyte can come along, gobble them up, and, you know, and destroy them. So in this case, these granzymes are essentially taking away the hiding place from the, from the uh, microbes so that the immune system can go uh, and attack them and kill them. One of the other ones we had already, th I think we already talked about is this perforin and granulysin. Um, so the perforin is going to poke holes into uh, the cell membrane of the cell, and then the granulysin is going to cause basically everything inside the cell to basically self-destruct. Um, it'll, it'll break everything else down. Um, so, you can, so in this case, you don't necessarily need to have the um, macrophages or the phagocytes come along to gobble up any loose uh, microbes. They are actually destroyed um, in the process of also killing the cell. Okay, so again, your body is always paying attention. Um, it's undergoing what's known as immunological surveillance. It is trying to maintain you. So if you happen to have any kind of cells that decide to go cancerous, um, they usually can pick up on those antigens. Now, obviously, it is not perfect. Um, clearly, lots and lots of people get cancer. Um, however, your immune system can fight off cancer cells to a certain extent. Um, and that immunological surveillance is carried out by those cytotoxic T cells, macrophages, and those natural killer cells. Okay. You can see here, particularly good against those cancer-causing viruses. Um, as I mentioned, uh, the cytotoxic Ts are also the reason why tissues get rejected. Um, so it's going to be really important. Remember we said that the only people that are going to have the exact same MHC1s are identical twins because they're genetically identical. They, they, they can't be different. Um, so basically, um, the more similar that the MHC1 antigen is, the less likely your immune system is going to think that it is a foreign, you know, uh, tissue. Okay, so that's why the, in, it is more, but this, um, because you're more genetically similar to parents or siblings, it, it is more likely that your MHC ones look like theirs or theirs look like yours. So that's usually why they try to find close family members first for any kind of tissue um, or organ donation um, because it's less likely that that tissue will be rejected. Okay. So one of the uh, anti-rejection drugs is something called cyclosporin. Um, it, let's see, it's derived from a fungus. The way that it works is it, it inhibits the secretion of interleukin-2 by the helper T cells. So basically, by inhibiting the secretion of interleukin-2 by helper T cells, it basically stops the cytotoxic Ts from functioning. Because basically, the cytotoxic Ts can attach to the donated new organ. However, without that co-stimulation by the interleukin-2 released from the helper T cell, since they're not getting that, they never actually activate. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. And the other thing that is really nice about this, however, is that you still have, the B cells are still fine, and B cells will not cause tissue rejection. Okay, B cells are just making uh, antibodies. Antibodies cannot cause tissue rejection or, or, or organ rejection either. Um, so what's nice about that is, is you don't have to totally give someone um, an immuno immunosuppressant drug that completely suppresses all levels of the immune system, because obviously if you do that, then they're very, very susceptible to, you know, even dying from like something as simple as the common cold. Um, so by having their B cells still active and able to fight off some infections, you know, it, it, it allows them to have a little bit more of a robust immune response and then, you know, just be healthier individuals in general. Next up is going to be antibody-mediated immunity, but I'm going to stop this video here um, so that we can get a fresh start, and I will see you next time.